How's it looking, Amorous? So my issue is that I put foil on top because my onions were browning or yeah. you know, burning. And now, I don't know how you can see it. Like, there was a little piece on the edge that wasn't covered with foil, which looks completely mm. dark. But the rest of it looks very light, which I think is just because of the foil, but... I would say we'll wait for David to walk back, but I would say to probably put it back in. How long has it been out? See that part? Yeah. Have a yeah. minute, two minutes. Yeah, I'd say toss it in for I'd maybe even uncovered. I don't know. You got was your arm? Was your um onions burning on the right there? Yeah, that's why I covered it. But I'll I'll toss it in uncovered for what three or four minutes? Just a, just a couple minutes or something. See okay. how that goes. Yeah, I mean, if it's like if it's pale, that's okay too. You know. It'll probably taste good still. I mean, I guess. Yeah, some of this I'm worried is actually a little bit dark. But yeah, but I don't think it's too, too bad. I, ha I dropped my temperature down 25 degrees because mine was cooking too much and my sun-dried tomatoes were burning. Uh, I don't know if you can see it. Let's see. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Oops. I guess I lost them. No, I'm no, still here. Yeah, we're here. You're still there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, we saw it too. Ready? I, I can't see you. Oh, this is Alice's. This is mine. Looks pretty oh, good. Yeah, looks good Did me. you try the thermometer to test it? Yeah, I got to 205. Cool. I think. Um, you think hot enough or keep going? I made mine 206. I'm, it seems <laughs> like it's done. Yeah, cool. I think. I, I tapped it and it sounds hollow. Yeah, oh, the tapping is good. Yeah, kind of yeah. yeah, usually it sounds you know, hollow. It should be done. Yeah, usually that's easier on a loaf of bread that you take out of the pan. This is tough because it's in the pan. But I think this is already come out. You say you could take it out. Yeah, let's do this. But we, but we, we should let ours cool, right? I don't know. You know, there wasn't specific instructions on this. I think I'm going to take it out because I want to watch what's about to happen. I want to eat it. It's gonna. So mine's a little bit stuck to the side. So I'm going to just work this around here. Hopefully, it doesn't become too much of a problem. We will find out, I guess. Yeah, maybe I should have oiled the sides a little more, huh? Yeah, I guess so. Well, yeah, my oil did not stick to my sides. Yeah, I mean, that's... I think the oil just all dropped down, right? Yeah, I think that's kind of bound to happen. The question is if you can spill. But maybe before we put it in to cook, we should have like used the brush and rebrushed the sides before it yeah. grew so much. I'm just hoping it doesn't stick on the bottom because that would be tragic. Yeah. I should document it before I damage it. <laughs> Good thinking. All right. Let's see. I may Should switch to a different the, spatula. Yeah. yeah. I think the bottoms are stuck a little bit. Yeah. Let's try not there. to scrape this pan, though. Yeah, it's a nice stick pan. Is yours stuck, Dolores, or you're not trying yet? I haven't tried it yet, but I can see it's stuck. Yeah. So I might probably take it out anyway. I didn't have this problem last time. I don't know why that was. Did I use the silicone pad that time? I don't remember doing that. Did you put, you didn't put um, parchment paper at the bottom, did you? Last time? Yeah. I don't remember. I kind of feel like you might have. It's possible. Anything's possible. There's no rules here. All right. Uh. Come on, guys, I don't have a good feeling about this. Yeah, it's like <laughs> a little burnt at the bottom. Like you're, not, you're not getting, um, on this edge, you don't have it. How long did you put it in for? I did uh, 25 minutes. I think maybe it came up to 26 or 27 total. Yeah. Yeah. yeah oh, it's man. It's totally stuck on the bottom. Oh, no. Is this the first time you used this recipe? This specific recipe, yeah. But I mean, I did basically the same thing last time. I can't think of what I would have done differently. I'm just debating if you use the. Um... The silicone pad or parchment paper. Yeah, I don't, the silicone pad wouldn't fit in there, so. 
Yeah, my guy cutting cutting like this to get a piece out, and then yeah, let's give it a shot. The bottom actually looks like it might be a little burned. The oil, maybe. No. It's too bad. This is looking good from the outside. I'll tell you yeah, that much. Yeah, that's it. It looks beautiful. It's probably gonna taste delicious too. Yeah. Mm. Do you want me to get a butter knife so you can try to go to the bottom a little more with? Sure. Maybe we figure out anything we can tell Eric if he hasn't baked his yet. I know, so Eric's smart. Mm -hmm. well, let me tell you, the inside of this thing looks awesome. Oh, yeah. Man. What about the people are on glass? Yours is still stuck, Alice? It's less stuck. I'm just trying to figure out strategically as I go around, like, which pieces are missing. Yeah. The edges were stuck, and then parts of the under are not stuck, and parts are. I'm working on it. Why don't you try to take this piece out first, no? I was just worried to be that the corners are worse. I was hoping that the middle would be better. I just want to eat it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the lesson here, everybody, is you know, sometimes your bakes don't turn out exactly how you were hoping. <laughs> oh, but it looks so good. It does look really good. Such a tease. Can't get it out. Did Paul Hollywood shake your hand? Dude, Paul <laughs> no. Hollywood not. He would say, he would say, nice bake, but it totally stuck to the pan. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'll use like a Crisco next time or something. Yeah, I think that'd be a good move. I think, they, them. I think the olive oil kind of just seeps right into the into the bread. I kind of yeah. think it's parchment paper. Oh, look, mine came out. Nice. Let's see it. Oh, nice. Look at her. Wow. Glass paper is also a uh, out of the glass dish. Yeah, parchment paper would be a good idea. It's also possible last time we didn't have it rise as long in the pan. I don't know. Looks good. Mine looks good. Are you going to sample a piece of it, Dolores? Are you going to wait? No, I'm going to wait. <laughs> I'm like, the moment David removes this from the mm -hmm. pan, I'm going to stuff it in my face. I've got like most of it up here. Got some spots. I think you might want to just the part that is stuck, leave it there and take out, like leave it behind, kind of thing. Mm -hmm. No bread left behind, Jenny. All right, let's see. Mikey tagged us in a post. Let's see what his looks like. All right. It's a little bit not as dark as ours, but yeah. it still looks good. That's really better. I can cut that. I bet I can get this piece out now. How is it, Alice? Um, Eric, is yours in a, a glass pan or a um, metal? Um, I don't even know what you call it. It's like the oh, it's like ceramic, right? No, no, it's metal. Huh. All right, took some work. We got that out. Let's see what it looks like on the inside there. That looks pretty delicious to me. Mm hmm. It's got a towel. Thank you. Cool. I think that I can now, as long as I get like that one edge out, I bet I can get the rest out a lot easier. First domino just has to fall. All right, I'm going to make my toppings and get ready. I'll, All right. Uh, I'll cool. FaceTime you when it comes out. Yeah. Mm. How's it taste? Right, this is the inside of mine. Oh, this looks good. You got yeah. a lot of like air, air in there. Air in there, yeah. All right, Joe, you want to taste some? Oh my God, it's delicious. There we go. I think I can get the rest of this out, actually. Yeah. Without... Am I going to be a guinea pig? Is that the idea? Yes. Yeah, if you don't want it, that's fine. Mm. 
This is Alice. Yes. Got some like white. Is that sort of like flour on the top, Alice? That is like looking like white powdery. I don't really see it in the second picture. I guess if I zoom in, I do. Um, I wonder if it's places that didn't have olive oil. Could be. Could but be. I never like smeared it. I just drizzled it. Hmm. I mean, Christian, if you're watching and listening from home, I will tell you, mine is falling apart, but tastes amazing and unlike mm. anything that Album Pen or Panera has ever tried to sell. Good. That's yes, yours. All right, let's get this a shot. Cheers. Cheers. Are we having this with dinner tonight? Or? Mm hmm. And what are we having? Still. Right. That is really good. That is a good bread. Mm. Mm hmm. Mmm. Mmm. Oh, yeah. All right. This is an important part of the... We're going to bring out the good stuff tonight. Salud. Cheers. No, no, no Carlos tonight. No. Mm -hmm. we, we got the box of wine. Amaris, what's happening over there? Well, I'm putting on Instagram for you guys. <laughs> I, it, it's a little stuck on one side, so I'm, I'm just taking a break from my efforts of taking it up out. <laughs> Did you eat any of it, though? I mean, I probably could. I, I wanted to, um... This is amazing. This is good. Mm, that looks good, Alice. Bubbly, gar uh, oniony, salty. Really oily in a really delicious sort of way. Yeah. Well, I wouldn't say really oily, I guess, but... No, I don't think Definitely so. Definitely, you don't need to add oil to it. Exactly. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Alice, what's that place in the North End that you can buy bread at? Is it Brico? Brico. Yeah. Christian, if you're ever looking for good made by somebody else um, focaccia, not that you would need to, because now you can make your own, but Brico mm -hmm. has a really good focaccia. Great suggestion. Thank you. <laughs> it's also I'm down a little tiny alley, which is, of course, I love. It is pretty fun. Yeah. You feel like you're going back into like old world Italy or something. Mm. Yeah. This is so good. This might not make it to dinner time. I don't know. Why bother making dinner? <laughs> Christian, what are you making today anyway? Else, did you bake something else? Yeah, we're baking bowls. Oh, awesome. You doing sourdough or are you doing. Um, yep. So we're using the sourdough that you gave Alice, that Alice gave us, and that you got from your mom. Cool. That's awesome. We're all on this all together. <laughs> Where'd you get the recipe from? So we've been trying to teach ourselves sourdough baking through YouTube, and then we have a friend, Julie Wormser, who also sent this recipe. And I think the hardest thing is what you were describing earlier. It's the hand, the baker's hand technique. We have a hard time shaping it. And so it just does the thing where it just spreads out and becomes a, a, a just a slightly thicker flatbread. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah, it's just a matter of practice. And like, that's the thing too, you know, a lot of these people you go on YouTube, I, I would, one video that I watched a lot was from Food 52. I think that was really good. And they had a professional baker come in and talk about this. But the thing is she bakes what, like 120 loaves of bread a day, right? Like they get so much practice compared to us. We get to do it once every two weeks or something. So. You know, let's all keep it in perspective on that. But it is a, yeah. just a practice, so just keep trying. Jenny will tell well, you the first, the many, many of the first breads I made did not rise at all. It was like hockey pucks. So Like a hockey puck, like the size of my yeah, head. It just spread right out, and it just wouldn't go vertical at all. It would just be, like, dense and hard. So it's just, like, sticking with it, trying different things. Do you use a no-need uh, technique? or Because I'm watching you fold the dough, so it, it suggests that you don't need it at all. Yeah, exactly. So when I do a boule, um, I do the same, the, the exact same process of just doing a folds and turns every half hour. Yeah, I found with this dough, it's so wet, you can't just knead it. Now people do knead though, they use like the slap and fold technique, they use other techniques. Um, but I also find those aren't necessary. Like this is so easy. Just, you know, you, you got to be on this little half hour just schedule. Just every half hour thing. Is yeah, but it's so easy once you do it, you just kind of scoop it, slap it over, it takes 30 seconds and Move on with the day. So, how's it taste, Amaris? Good. Yeah, I got some 
you can't tell, but air bubbles and stuff. Yeah, totally. It looks like a nice open crumb there. Good. Tastes very good. I don't know. Maybe Paul Hollywood would shake my hand if, like, if I could get this out of the pan without him seeing me, like, struggle to get it out when we presented it, he'd be pretty impressed, I think. Yeah. Yeah. I think anyone who ate this would shake my hand. Yeah, exactly. Not right now, though. <laughs> From six feet away, Paul Hollywood would be like, that's good bread. <laughs> Understand that the first half is also a really important caveat. Right. I wonder, uh, I wonder, what, you know, are they shooting these reality shows and stuff? Probably not. I don't know. I'm going to stop eating this. Mm -hmm. We had, um, one of our friends was on a reality show. He's on a glass blowing show of oh, Blown Away on Netflix. Good show. Recommend it. Um, Which one? Blown Away. Oh, yeah. Jenny, you, you know someone on that, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So we saw him a couple weeks ago. He was in, in Boston and he was telling us about what it's like behind the scenes there. It's pretty funny. One thing that he said that stuck with me is he said that the pauses are real. Like at the end when they say like, and this week we have to say goodbye too. And then they pause for like a minute and a half and they show the camera on everyone's face. He's like, yeah, they really do that long. Like everyone's just sweating and like <laughs> waiting for them to get, get to it. And that they like sometimes tell him what they want him to say. Like say that you want a beater. And he's like, I'm not going to say that. And they're like, say it. He's like, no, I'm not saying it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or they're like they'll just have him do things out of context. They're like, do the robot. He's like, I'm not doing the robot. <laughs> what are you talking? About? It's called for sparkling water. I'll move back. I think the the large crystal salt on ours is a pretty key yeah. delicious factor. Yeah, very salty. Needs accompanying beverage. I didn't put enough salt, I don't think. Put it on now, maybe? <laughs> yeah, that's all right. It'll be fine. Yeah, how'd the tomatoes come out? Did they look like they burnt or anything? Mine, yeah, they did a little. Uh, do you oh. have yours packed in oil? So, I, no, I can have them dried, and then when I'm going to make them, I pack, I um, rehydrate them and then pack them in oil. Okay, interesting. Yeah, no, yeah, I don't have any. I've never tried making them, so I can't say. Yeah, well, I, you know, at the end of the season, I had a ton of tomatoes left mm -hmm. over, so I put them in the dryer. Yeah. You going to do any gardening this weekend? Yeah, I bought a bunch of seeds, so we're going to try to get the seeds planted, you know, in pots inside, and then I'm going to try to plant some uh, snow peas outside if we can. Cool. That's good. Yeah, Jenny put a bunch of stuff in... Um, <laughs> and she got a bunch of seeds and put them in little like seed pods. Yeah. Um, so they're all outside right now because it's beautiful out and there's in the sun. So yeah. Um, anyone that's on can feel free to can feel free to sign off if you want or, or if you just want to hang out and talk. I'm just gonna talk. Hey, David. Yeah. The part that I'm about to wrap in tin foil. Yeah. I would let it cool first. Okay. Let it cool more. Yeah, because it, you want it to be totally cool for that. Otherwise, it'll steam inside the tin foil and it'll get all soft. Right. So, yeah. When it's done cooling and I put it in tin foil, where do I put it then? Um, so you're gonna try to freeze some of it, or are you gonna just like leave it in your house to eat? I think it's, this is gonna be like I've gotten to a place where I'm good on the biscuits. They do like 10 seconds in the microwave, a half toast, add a topping, put back for more toast. That whole system. Mm -hmm. But this seems not like it's going to go through that process so well. Yeah. I mean, you can just leave it at room temperature, like I said, for a couple of days. And then when it's time to eat it, like, do you have a toaster oven? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can... Wrap it in foil. I would probably say, yeah, wrap it in foil, put it in the toaster oven for whatever, 15 minutes or something like that. To let it heat and reheat without burning the, the edges. So that's my thought. Um, okay. Yeah, hey, probably it tastes good cold, too. I think my mom had said sandwiches. I bet you if you just slice this guy right through there and put some like chicken and pesto and mozzarella in there, it'd probably be really good. Mm -hmm. I have none of those things. <laughs> and furthermore, I'm not sure this bread has the integrity to be sliced. <laughs> <laughs> David, are you D Norcott? I am. And you said Norcott Bakery. Is that what you were? Yep. Okay. That's me. That's my non Norcott Bakery or Norcott Brothers Bakery? Norcott Bakery. Norcott Brothers Bakery is when I'm cooking with Dan. We haven't done that in a while, though, since he's gone gluten-free. 
we're gonna uh, get back to that. Although he does want to do macarons soon, and those are gluten free, so we can uh, make that happen. Jenny may Jenny may do a macaron class. I'm gonna put her on the spot right now. We'll see. We'll see. There may be a macaron class coming. French macarons. Wait, wait. David can't say croissants, but you have to say macarons? <laughs> no, I generally don't. I just need it as a qualifier that I'm not talking about like macaroons, the things covered in coconut, but like French macarons. The little macarons. colorful yeah. sandwich cookies. Don't worry, I know you hate coconut. She's just it's changing. Yeah, me. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what happened. Getting older, you love coconut. All women love coconut when they get older, huh? <laughs> Apparently. We, we know that things are real bad when I start liking anise and, uh, and black licorice and raisins. Raisins are going to be my next question. What's that? The real worry would be putting raisins in things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. She put raisins in, uh, we have a really good Moroccan chili recipe that actually has raisins in it and Jenny loves it, so. And I put raisins in the granola yesterday, too. Yeah. Every, every, and coconut. Raisins and coconut place. in the granola. Wow. Well, tomorrow's hot cross bun day. Oh, I was thinking about making some. So you're doing it tomorrow, huh? Yep. Well, that's cool. Maybe I should do that. I'll have to get your recipe. Okay. I I'll keep seeing them at the grocery store, but I know I can't get through a whole box. Yeah. <laughs> Freeze them. Yeah. The thing is, they have the fake uh, candies in them, which I don't like. Didn't. Tate's making them and selling them next weekend. I'm tempted to do that. Wow, well, there you go. All right. Well, okay. thanks, guys. Thank you so much, everybody, for attending. I hope that you enjoyed it and learned something and got some delicious out of it. And uh, I'll send a, an email about next weekend. It sounds like maybe a popover and followed by a bull the following weekend. So we can do that. Look forward cool. to that. Okay, cool. Sounds good. All right. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Great. Bye. Thank, uh, this is great. Thanks for inviting me, Dave. Yeah. Bye, yeah, Christian. Come Take on, care. bye, Alice. Have a great weekend. You too.